Running fans, jumping fans, throwing fans, all around athletics fans, welcome to Talking in Ovals. I am Alex Cuesta. My partner in crime over there is Dave Hyatt. What's going on, my brother? I got to say, as well as Jakob Igoritsen ran at the meet in Eugene, he ran on Tuesday, two days afterwards, he ran his first ever beer mile at his bachelor party. The guy ran 522 after traveling, after running 343. 723 traveling all the way back. That might be his most impressive feat of that whole. I'm disappointed. Got to be sub five or, or broke. Come on. I expect he just traveled from, all the way back. Hold your beer. That means he's just not <laughs> chugging beer fast enough. That's all that tells me is Jakob needs to work on his beer chugging technique. We need to get him to a college in America. It was his bachelor Let him party. learn a little something. It was his own bachelor party. <laughs> yes. We don't know how wasted he actually was when he did it. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, you know, maybe we'll give Jakob a break there, but yes, congratulations to Jakob Ingerbritson. Um, before we get into all the fun stuff, today's Monday, September 25th of 2023 episode 57 for those keeping score at home. If you like what you hear today, give us a like, share, follow, subscribe, wherever you are. Rate five star Spotify and iTunes. Spread this word of mouth because if you're listening to this, then you're a running fan or your family of me and Dave. But either way, um, if you're listening to this, you are a running fan and you need to start telling everyone, hey, if you like podcasts, there's a really good one. They have great guests. You know, one of the hosts, he kind of sucks, but Dave Hyatt's pretty cool. But, you know, we'll just you just get this word of mouth. We want to be the biggest running podcast on the planet. So. Let's get this done and go follow us on socials at Talking and Ovals. So before we get into PRs, which we have some this week, which is awesome, I want to talk about last week's show real quick, Dave. Um, yeah. Every time we have a high schooler on, this, she's our third high schooler. They're amazing. This generation is incredible. I'd be a bumbling idiot if I was talking Listen, when I was in high school. They have amazing insight and just, yeah. just they're so well-spoken. And it's I don't know if it's because they grew up in this age with the internet and, and Probably. everything, but man, they are just on fire. They're on point. So we're talking about Peyton Hollis. She was on last week. She's a senior over at Union Catholic High School in New Jersey. Um, absolute national powerhouse. She's one of the top runners in the state and, you know, in the country. So great episode. Go back and listen to that. And like I said, we have some PBs, PRs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, coming in from our good buddy, Coach Tafelski over at Westfield. He competed this week at Bowdoin Park, right in my backyard over here in Poughkeepsie. Um, I think some people consider it Wappinger's Falls. I don't care. It's Poughkeepsie. And they ran incredible. The team themselves average 1622 at Bowdoin, which is a school record by 26 seconds. The fourth fastest team ever um, from New Jersey at Bowdoin. All the other three were CBA. So what that means is they're actually the fastest because they're the best public school to ever do it. We don't count those parochials. I'm kidding, Sean. Uh, congrats to CBA because CBA also had an absolutely oh, monster race over at Bowdoin too. But um over there for Westfield, Avery Keith got a big old uh, PR. He ran a 1603 school record over there for at Bowdoin. And then also Jimmy Gildea with, had a over minute PR running a 1616. So congratulations to Westfield doing all things. They're top guys. And if you're listening and you have a PR, send it our way. We want to talk about it. We want to talk about you guys. Like we've always said, don't care how fast it is. Don't care how slow it is. If it's a PR, we all know the same pain. We all worked our asses off before. Send it to us. We want to give you a shout out. So now we're going to get into meat and potatoes of the show, what everyone came here for, because we have some really cool guests. And I want to thank some of our guys, Steve Slattery and Ian Hahn, for being able to you know, talk about this, hook this up, because this is really fun for us. We have a twin brother duo that is with us, and you'd be hard-pressed to ever find siblings in running as successful as D2. First, we have Ed Torres. He's a three-time Foot Locker finalist, 2001 cross-country team champion with uh, Colorado University, four-time United States XC world team member, one-time USA track and field marathon team member, and he's also married with the father of two kids. And not to be outdone there, his brother, Jorge, not George, don't you dare say George, Jorge Torres, he is a three-time Illinois XC state champ, four-time Foot Locker finalist, All-American, uh, 1998 champion of the race, 2001 XC team champion with Colorado, 2002 XC uh, champion um, on his own, NCAA XC champion, 
2006 USATF 10K champion and a 2008 US Olympian in 10K. Gentlemen, also, he's also married to two children. Gentlemen, what's going on? Hey, thanks for having us on the show. Thanks, uh, thanks, Dave and Alex, for having us. Uh, this is exciting. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're still here. Uh, <laughs> just a little bit older and slower, but we're here. <laughs> You know what's fun? Aren't we all like, because like I sit there and like you guys have amazing resumes, and as have a lot of our guests have had incredible resumes. I never get tired of taking the time to in the beginning to read off all your accomplishments. And there's some of our guests that'll give us like two or three things, and then I look and I'm like, absolutely not. I'm going to mention a ton of things. Like you have, <laughs> so you guys are awesome. And like I said, I can't remember Dave. You're much more of a textbook than I am when yeah. it comes to tracking XE and things. As there, to your knowledge, have we had a sibling duo be as successful as these two? I think it's like we need a historian. Where's Jim Lambert? Where's Jeff Benjamin? We need to talk to those guys. See, if we I can can't get think of one. I mean, I mean I, of, of siblings who are also twins, I, I cannot think of, of anyone who's even in the same ballpark. Yeah. So, guys, it is an absolute privilege to have you on. Now, I want to start off. Um, where we always start off with our guests. And, you know, Jorge, since I introduced Ed first, I'm going to start with you. And you guys could kind of both chime in as you want. Um, we always ask right away, where did the spark start? Because most people don't want to be runners, right? A lot of people, they grow up, they want to be football players, baseball players, soccer players, soccer players. Soccer yep. players. Yep. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm really fast. I'm kind of not great at this sport, but I'm really good. I did one season at track. So where was your spark in order to say, you know what? I'm a runner. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Well, I mean, the, the initial introduction to running started with gym class, probably most like just like anybody else. And um, I, I, that wasn't the spark that got me going to where I you know, eventually ended. But uh, but it was definitely an introduction. Um, I, I would say ultimately uh my spark that was different probably from Ed's was uh, I was in sixth grade. It was actually my first season of running cross country. And our junior high was in Illinois. There's actually a state meet for junior high kids. Wow. Uh, cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it is cool. And our, our I went to MacArthur Junior High in Prospect, Illinois. Um, I, I grew up in Wheeling, but we just happened to be in that district. And um, MacArthur had a strong tradition of having strong teams, especially in the female going up. They won several state titles, but never in the, in the men's side. Um, so my sixth grade year, a huge class of eighth graders were there, and they ended up um, cutting me off the team and putting all the eighth graders to – Pete for the state meet, and I really kind of just lit a fire in my ass to to do better. Um, and um, the guy who cut me was a guy named Greg Fedeski, who was like my mentor, uh, my lifelong mentor, who has passed away since. But uh, he right here. he um, he really did a did, did, did I guess whether it was intentionally done or not, he lit a fire in my ass, and, uh, <laughs> and I ended up uh, going over and um, and. Uh, and, and realizing that I wanted more. And then that's that winter I ended up running the TAC. Speaking about aging yourself. I ran TAC too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ran Athletic TAC. Congress. There we go. There we go. They, oh, yeah. You know what you're talking TAC. about. I ran uh, TAC. Yep. Uh, we we're talking earlier about the locker and kidney. So, you know, when you age yourself, you age yourself. Oh, yeah. so, um, but uh, TAC was now, as everybody knows, USA track and field, uh, junior Olympics. Um, and I ended up winning the national championship for the, uh, it's what they called the, the midget division, age 11 oh. uh, in Mobile, Alabama. And You're gonna get I, was that. I was at race. I was at Mobile, Alabama. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> no, I was at that race in Mobile, Alabama. I ran the, the youth. I think I was like 18th or, or something, but wow. I had no idea Across that, you were at Mobile, at, that you were at Mobile, Alabama. I was there. I remember going, that was like my first, I won. I got third in states. I won regionals, and then I went out there to mobile. Uh, that's so cool. Let's see. So there we go. We, who would have thought? And then the uh, <laughs> next year it was at. Um, next year was in uh, no, no. Was it Reno. Oh, no. I'm sorry. The, the 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 year before it was in like like a Sandy Sandy Oregon. And so that was before yeah. my time of the running world. Yeah. I was still <laughs> thinking about being a basketball player or a football. I was at that race. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So that's that. You know, that's the roundabout way of how uh, all of a sudden it just took off from there. And 
and uh, and I won that ti- I won that title in, in Mobile, Alabama, and from there the, the rest is history, guys. So to that's, say, that's awesome. So Ed, same question to you. Where did that spark start with you? Well, similar like with George. Uh, uh, sorry, he I was like called me George because I, he. He does it. Sorry. Yes. So this is uh, just let's put it this way. He's, he's my he's my brother. I'm gonna call right. him. You can born. call him whatever you want. He's out <laughs> here. I call him George. I'm not gonna call him Jorge. I'm sorry. That's not is gonna happen. That's okay. <laughs> um. So so yeah. So I, I guess I'm the only one I can call him George. I guess. But um. It, so we're in uh yeah. So we're there in sixth grade and we both ran cross country in the fall with Greg, uh, Fedeski and um. I just didn't like it. I was like, this is, uh, this is painful. This is, I, I don't see the fun in this. And I want to go try wrestling. As soon as the season was over, I was like, I didn't, I didn't care much for being on a team, the seventh or eighth grade team. I was just doing it for fun. And, uh, so like I went to go try wrestling and, and Jorge was doing tack during that time. And, uh, the, the quite the, the exact moment that I remember getting the spark was when I got the call that George had won. And my dad is like, my mom was like, well, let's go pick up uh, your dad and your brother at the airport. And um, I was like, nah, not really. He's like, no, let's go pick him up. So we went, so I went to my mom and dad, my mom to go pick up my, my dad and Jorge, George. And um, I remember him coming down the escalator with his little grin in his face and his little tro- and his trophy. And I was like, gosh, dang it. Like, if this guy can do this, I can do this too. So, <laughs> you beat him? I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be determined to, to catch up and you know do, do as good as Jorge did and just be as good as he is. So that was like the exact moment I realized that I wanted to be at that level as well. That's awesome. that is the most sibling thing I ever heard. Yeah, and I love beautiful. every single moment of it. But that's also cool, right? Because like I have a sister that's four years older, a brother that's eight years younger. So it's like I never had that consistent drive and motivation that I'd imagine twins, especially twins is athletic yeah. twins have when you see each other, like you obviously root for each other, but it's also like, yeah, but I kind of hate you. I'm going to do it better than you. Like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, I hate this, you know, I, I, I want to say that we outgrew this situation, but it hasn't outgrown it yet. And it should a level of golf now that we just, we, we call each other every time we're like shoot, shoot scores and the index goes down. And it was like, it's just like, <laughs> it's like a, <laughs> it, it, it hasn't stopped one bit yet. <laughs> I love I mean, it. There, they could tell you stories about us. Like in, when we were living in Chicago and it was, uh, my our brothers were Egas Han, older brothers were Egas Han. We'll be playing like soccer in the living room, and I remember one time, like I don't know, Jorge got the best of me. I scored or something out of me, and I got so upset that I just pushed him against the couch. I think I broke his collarbone that day. You think? <laughs> yeah, you did break my collarbone. <laughs> we are bringing out old wounds here. I, I love it. Yeah. This is this is supposed to be a fun podcast, guys, and you guys are gonna we're gonna sit there and be like the cause of like a familiar rift here. No, no, no. It's all, it's like all like, we we know the competition is there, and we're and we're. Whatever it takes to uh, beat one of each other, we're, n- we're not going to hold it against each other. <laughs> I, I don't think Alex and they realize they're going to be our therapist for the evening. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Hey, well, listen, we're <laughs> cool with that. We got we got a nice little setup here. Podcasts are nice and chill spots. So I want to jump back in, and Ed, I'll jump with you here. So you obviously have, you know, from that spark, you have an incredible career. You know, you run very well. Um, you know, you start competing at an extremely high level, foot lockers, going to Colorado national championship as a team there and everything, and really good. Um what are some of your favorite memories and stories that you can tell us? Um, again, it's a podcast, you can tell us whatever you want. Yeah. But uh, some amazing memories and stories, you know, starting from when you got that spark seventh grade through high school, through college, through pro. Um, I mean, I can remember one particular week. Uh, we went out to uh, Stockton, Illinois, and um, Coach Fed uh, had us run with the team, with the, our middle school team, uh, MacArthur Junior High. We were training the, that year to like, Jorge and I were, we were poised to go one, two in every race, eighth grade year. And um, we had some other outside runners join us from like Niles North, Illinois, uh, Bobby Bright, a couple other guys. And um, that they, they were pretty good, like all state. They were going to be top five in the state. And and our team was there and uh, we're all training hard and uh, long miles. And we get back, we're driving back to, to, um, to uh, drop off all the kids. And Fed tells us to get off the car. Um, we got home. We got home. He's like, we're doing repeats. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. We, I'm, I'm tired as a dog. Are we going to do a repeats for now? 
and he has um he has lined up and it was like i think it was eight by 800 and <laughs> and it was like and it was like in, in yeah. eighth grade in eighth grade yeah and I was like, i'm exhausted like and it was that like explains why you guys were that good yeah and, uh, <laughs> and i was like i'm like all right we got in line we it, slowly but surely all the guys were just falling off They're like i'm done i'm i can't do this anymore and i was like i refused to give up and jorge refused to give up and we just kept on doing it and doing it. it was just finally last two it was just jorge and i doing it and that particular moment i realized i'm going to get this workout done that's to prove this guy i can do this and i knew it wasn't about the time it wasn't about just like running fast it was like he's going to see what how how far deep can we go in into the tank and for that point on i realized that um fed was there to test us and push us to the limits and have us get to that level of you just said you know full locker finalist which i didn't know about full locker until i got to high school i had no idea what full locker was um and then also to go you know go to college and go to you know ultimately end up professional runners for a couple of years <laughs> If that's what you want to call me. I don't know if I was a professional or not. You were a pro. I don't want to Absolutely. hear you. You were definitely a pro. So, you know, and the thing is, it's like we've talked to, you know, coaches and stuff now. And that approach, I don't think would fly. Like, number one, like parents will probably complain because where's my kid? You know what I mean? And then also like to sit there and have you guys work your tail off and then to make you do something like that again. It doesn't seem like that coaching approach is something that a lot of people take anymore. Like for me, for Dave, for you guys, that old school style is like, makes sense you see kids with talent you want to push them see if they have some balls right okay. now you're going to get a, a tweet or an x or whatever the hell it's called this coach abused me and there you go your job is done so it's like it's cool to hear those old school stories and yeah. i wish we had a little more of that grit because i feel like there's certain guys and girls right now that we see in running that have grit and they're the national champions right you know, you have your guys, you have Yard and Goose. Who knew Yard and Goose was going to become the American record holder in the mile? He was running well in college, but then he shatters Alan Webb's record. That just shows grit. And he was someone, he, if we can ever get Yard on the show, he's someone that could probably tell us a story like that back in whatever age, 14, 15, 13 years old, my coach pushed me and he didn't cry about it. And that's, that's an awesome thing. 13-year-old telling a 13-year-old you're tired, go do eight by 800 repeats. That's like ridiculous. So I, I, love I also it. love how one of your favorite memories is from eighth grade getting destroyed. Like, I mean, you know, like, like that's, <laughs> that's just so, so cool. You know, like you could have picked anything and you're like, no, nah, I remember in eighth grade, my, my coach, we came back eight by eight. Like that's just it, awesome. It, it, it built the character that we had in us and installed in us. And, I think Wetmore, when ultimately he was recruiting us, and he talked to uh, Coach Fed and all, all the other other everyone who he talked to about us. Uh, I think he realized that George and I were Midwest hard nosed, just get to work and get it done. Yeah, so, that, I, think, I think Fed. I think Fed. Uh, there's many stories we can talk about Fed, and like I, I told you earlier in, in the episode here that uh, he was a mentor to Eduardo and I. And, and uh, you know, Ed, thanks for sharing that story. That came, that came right flashing right back to my head. <laughs> I'm still hurting from that workout, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you guys uh, got to Colorado and we're like, these workouts are easy. You never. That's exactly. <laughs> it. But uh, I'm not doing eight by eight. I remember. Now. I remember what more. Come on, what more? Uh, Tell me a story one time that when we were after we were recruited and whatnot, and, and he said to me something. He brought something up like, you know, we had a couple. Of, we had a little bit of controversy in my senior year of high school, and we were. Uh, not eligible to run outdoor track because we ran some races. Like, we'll, we'll get to that if we touch it later on. Anyway, uh, Fed told me that, or one more told me that he received a call from some anonymous caller saying that you know we were we weren't good good apples because you know we're, yeah. we didn't get we, you know we weren't eligible to run our senior year. And um, and and uh, what more said. You know what? I'll take my chances. <laughs> he went ahead and signed us anyway. But um, he talked to Fed earlier, I guess, and and I guess he asked Fed, like, you know what? How, what, what are these guys like? And he's like, you know, I guess Fed's response was, and this is something I heard later on. Like Fed's response was, uh, you know, these guys aren't serious about ninety nine point nine percent of the time, but when it comes to workouts, the day the the, the moment the workout starts, it's game on their serious face turns on and they'll get the job done, whether it's a race or a workout, but get them off the, get them off the track. They're not serious again. So, you know, that's good. 
so got to be able to flip that switch. And I feel yeah. like that's another thing that's lost in a lot of athletes. And, you know, I'm talking, you know, go back to last week with Peyton Hollis. She was kind of talking about the mental aspect of running and high school kid talking about the mental aspect. Right. When I was in high school, I was just too stupid to know there should be a mental aspect. Like it was like, yeah. toe the line, look at people next to me, try and beat them. Like that was my whole mental aspect. Yeah. But, it, yeah. you know, it, it's like the switch needs to be able to be flipped on and off. And I think a lot of people have lost that. I think in athletics in general, right? Like you're not just, you know, Jorge and Ed, the runners. You're obviously just two dudes that are really good at running and you have other things. And I think that that's been lost. And it's like great to hear like, all right, off the track, we're just having a good time. Once our toes hit the line, I hate everyone else and I'm going to win. Like that is just the mentality that I think a lot more people need to hear so you know all right do you have any other memories that you want to kind of throw in there any other stories well i mean that's a tough one to follow i mean he went went deep into the vault in that one (laughs) ready he was Uh, the itinerary and he was ready (laughs) oh man um putting me on a spot here and um you know that this 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 beautiful sport of running has brought so many great memories and to just narrow it down to one would be you hard. Can as many as you want. You don't got to just say one. You could throw out a few. Would be hard pressed. Um, but I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I could. I was fortunate enough to start this at a very young age and go through all the way through. Oh, it's you know, I guess as an Olympian. But um, but uh, you know, I honestly, I, I, for me, it still goes back to being a team and and having the the, the brotherhood or the friendship of a team that really, I really enjoyed about the sport and um just recently i didn't get to attend the university of Colorado football game with coach prime opening it up at Folsom but um stadium which is you know boulders cu stadium football stadium but everybody a lot of my teammates went back and i i, I for unfortunate reasons i couldn't actually because i was playing golf <laughs> there's was, there was a major golf tournament i couldn't That's i couldn't miss but no uh, reason <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I, uh, you know, just watching them get together, and it's not just the one time. We get together often, um, and it's um, so for me that friendship that we built when I was at CU, or where I, whether I was a, a junior high runner at MacArthur or in Wheeling, Illinois. Um, but uh, that's we won the national championship in two thousand and one as an indiv- as a team, and. Um, as a goal that Ed and I set out to do, it's when we were recruited by C was to bring home that first national championship to them, uh, to be a part of that. And, and to have missed out on it the year before, um, at Ames, Iowa and, and look at each other in the eye and say like, gosh, we are so close. How did we mess that up? But then they come back and actually accomplish it because we worked hard and continue to trust each other. We kept um, and grinding out those miles and, um, um, and sharing those experiences and, you know, Steve Slattery is being Steve Slattery. Uh, Love that guy. We have, we have, uh, I mean, we were all roommates too. So all of us were roommates at the, at the time. So like, you know, that's what the college is about. Like you have these crazy roommates and you create these crazy stories. Oh yeah. And I could go on and talk to you about uh, our days at the fight club, which is a whole other subject as well. But uh, <laughs> we don't but, talk about fight club. First of all, <laughs> fight club, man. First of all, fight club. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but it was one of those things like I, st- my greatest memories are just a-, a bunch of little, my new memories that just kind of gather all together. And when we crossed that finish line, we won by one point and I'm looking at my teammates in their eyes and I'm like, wow, we did this together. I just want you to do it individually, but doing it together as a team, it's it's just a really cool feeling. And I still, I still just I get I get goosebumps just thinking about it. So that's you, awesome. You both have represented the United States. Um, you know, you both have had the you know ability to wear USA across your chest and compete, which is just some has to be something that's so cool. But you talked about the team aspect, Jorge. How different was it? transitioning from college and then getting into the pro setting and joining, you know, a team USA, even though, you know, XC championships, was it different with the team aspect there? Because obviously in college, you're rooming with each other, you're with each other all the time, you're eating and everything. And now here you are a bunch of pros thrown together, go represent the United States at the world XC championships. 
How much different is that? Because even though it's still a team aspect, you're a bunch of pros. You're still competing for position. You still yeah. want to have put on the best race as possible. So you don't train together. You, you don't. Know. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's a it's a it's a, like? it's a group together that gets thrown together and go represent USA. It's actually yeah. You know, I just put it this way. Let's be, let's be clear. Wearing a USA uniform is cool no matter when. What what yeah. setting it is? I mean, you're representing your country. That's like a, the best honor you could possibly have as an athlete. Um, and and to me, no matter whenever I put that uniform on, it was awesome. And and I took pride in it. And I and and I and I, the the teammates that were there next to me at cross country races. I was lucky enough to have my brother being the same team with me in, in Edinburgh. And that was that was like one of the also one of the pinnacle parts of my career was being able to wear the USA uniform with my brother. Um, but yeah, no, that's it, it's it's no matter when where you are, if you're wearing the USA uniform, it was always cool. And you just try to do your best to represent your country. And I think I would say, honestly, that anybody on that starting line felt the same way. So, um, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's different because you're not sharing the blood, sweat and tears um, in person, but not to say that they weren't working just as hard in their own territories. And I think that's the, that's the thing that, um, that people don't understand is that the, the amount of work that goes behind the scenes to get to that starting line is bigger than most people understand. And, and you, most people that run into sport or in this, in this, um, uh, partake in, in cross country or track is that they, you know, they can make it to a certain level, but then you still got to grind it out by yourself beyond that to try to make it to the world class level. And that's, that's the, that's the part that, um, it takes certain special individuals to get to, uh, to that point where you're, you're, you're not afraid to step out there on your own and take your own path. And, you know, and how about for you, Ed, because you were four time a member of the XE uh, team. So it's like you became the Wiley veteran, I assume, towards the end. Like you probably had kids jumping on there looking at you. OK, what to expect? I'm rocking Team USA at the World XE. And then you were also USA Track and Field Marathon, t- marathon team member, which I can imagine being even more lonely because the marathon is pretty oh. spread out in terms of, you know, what everyone's trying to accomplish there. <laughs> What was that like? You know, four times that's a hell of an accomplishment Absolutely. to be, you know, Team USA XC four times and also jump higher with the marathon. How was that experience for you? Well, you know, the experience started off actually in um, what's well, one of those things again where Jorge made a team when he was in uh, high school. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember he came back with, I mean, I remember he got the gear like the, the Christmas in July. You're uh, <laughs> gear, like, it shows up to the house and it's like a bag full of like USA gear. And I remember Jorge throwing me a T-shirt here. This, why don't you, this is yours. Why don't you use this? And I'm like, I threw it right back at him. I'm like, I want to earn my own jersey. And I didn't want it. And I, from that point, point on, I was like, I want to make a team myself. And uh, I remember my parents, when they wanted to go see uh, Jorge in Morocco, my dad's like, do you want to go? I'm like, no, I'm going to earn that ticket myself. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to, I'm going to have you. I'm like, I want, I want this to be earned. So I made a goal to make a team. And uh, fast forward uh, a couple of years through high, through college, I was obviously focusing on cross country nationals and stuff. So I wasn't doing anything post because I was going to go to the indoor season and then track season. So uh, my senior year, um, I had coming off a great cross country season, um, and George and Dathan are both out right after the season was over. These guys get hurt, and I was thinking like, okay, I'm gonna have three two good guys to train with, and I'm gonna be able to make this team. Nope, I'm not there by myself. You talk about being out there by yourself for, um, yeah, for like six weeks. I'm out there grinding by myself. And I remember the Billy Nelson, Brett Schoolmeister, um, and Peyton Batland, I think was some of the younger guys that were there trying to make the junior team. They would jump in intervals and work out with me and just to help me out. But um, that motivation to make that team was all purely going back to uh, George's uh, senior in high school, I'm like, I'm going to make this team <laughs> with or without him. I'm just going to show up to this team. And, uh, I, that I went to Houston that year as the, the, the national championship was in Houston. And here I am lined up and the race goes, starts off. And right off the bat, I go up to the front with Meb, Cole Pepper, Abdi and me. Alan up there just running all four of us up there in front and Meb and Alan kind of separated between me and Abdi. We had like a little bit of space. And Abdi was there with me, and Abdi, Abdi was obviously trying to drop me and push the pace. And I just got to hanging on there. And I think with a lap and a, a lap and a half to go, I, I realized I'm like, I still have a lot of energy. Like, so I just told Abdi, like, all right, Abdi, thanks for helping. 
thanks for the ride. I just took off on them. And <laughs> I went on. And I at that point, I was actually <laughs> pacing down and med, trying to get a hold of them. And it was a muddy, sloppy mess. So I knew those guys were like track fast guys. And that mud was going to be difficult on them. And I was like always a, a mudder, if you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. And I was making that move. And I, I made that team. And I obviously, I didn't catch up to them. But I ended up third place. And I think at, at uh, Lausanne, uh, Switzerland that year, um, I was third place. I was a third uh, team member for USA. But um, going, making more teams later on, I'm in, I made to the Mon Jordan team. I'm the old veteran there. And um, I remember when they were choosing team captains, um, they, they nominated me. And I was like, I felt so honored. So I was like, wow, now I became old man now. And now they're calling me the captain over here. And it happened that Jorge wasn't there. And I was, I was, I guess, I was one of the, I wasn't the Cole Peppers. I wasn't the Abdi. I wasn't the Allen, uh, or Abdi or Allen or um, Meb. But the team that was there, voted me as captain. I was like, I felt so honored for that, you know? And it's like, it's something like I look back at it. I'm like, I, I guess I did earn it. Cause I've worked so hard and I've always been in the back scenes with Jorge, Dathan, you know, the bigger guys, like the big names up there. But eventually I made myself up to, you know, I, I don't know, we, we's my way to be a captain. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that's so, definitely hard earned. <laughs> I definitely want to uh, bring you guys back a, a, a little bit. So you're in high school. Was there ever a, doubt that you would go to the same college like was ever like like i want to race against my brother or were they always like we are a package deal we're going to go together ed we'll we'll, we'll start with uh, you oh i i think i'm going to answer this pretty quickly it was a package deal all the way through we were when we were getting recruited i think one of the bigger things we said was it's going to be out west so west of the mississippi and um it's a package deal so martin smith all the guys uh what more Nana, we told him like you get two or you get none. So yeah, yeah. and that's awesome to hear. Wetmore is obviously a New Jersey guy, which which where we are from. So like, what was because obviously you guys were you know two of the top recruits, whole country. Like, what was his pitch that that, that made you guys choose to go to Colorado? Well, I mean, you shouldn't ask that question because he didn't really have a pitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what was his? Um, like, you are coming here, and that's it. <laughs> no, it was it wasn't even that. I mean, I it wasn't, it wasn't even a phone call. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even a phone it was call. Jersey attitude, like hey, I don't care. I'm from Jersey. Get your asses here, and then we're gonna win. I mean, Dave, to be honest with you, it was more of a we. So we, we Fed was nice enough to take us out to Boulder. Um, speaking about stuff they used to never get away with, we'd go on the trips in the summer with our teammates and Fed, who was supposedly in charge, was probably more of a kid than we were. <laughs> um, was uh, was him and my high school coach <laughs> would take us to uh, to to Boulder. We took us to Boulder my junior year and our was our junior year, junior year, and senior year. Our junior year was our first year, and our senior year we came back. Heading into our junior year, heading into our senior year, so we went to Boulder, and obviously he was kind of like pushing for us to go to Colorado, uh, selling Boulder itself. But, um, but you know, we, we, we went more being there. He never even bothered even saying hello to us when we were there in, in high school. And I don't think he could have anyway, legally, but, or maybe he could have, I have no idea, but long story short, our senior year comes around and we're like, okay, we're looking at schools, which, which ones do we want to go to? We have several colleges calling us and contacting us, especially like the first Calls came, I think, in the beginning of July, I believe, whatever it was, and and there was never one. There was not one back then. You had to call back home and ask mom and dad, like, "Hey, uh, were there any messages in the answering machine or <laughs> anybody called?" Um, so you, you know, you, it, and sure enough, like my mom and dad had a list of a bunch of schools that called, but there was no Colorado. So I'm not like, you know, what gives? What's what's the problem here? Um, so when it finally came to actually getting recruited, it was actually the assistant coach, uh, Jason Drake, JD, who's a good friend of mine to this day. And uh, good fr- he also competed at CU. So he's a part of that big network that we have at CU, um, CU family. But uh, he he's the one to push it and push to, uh, to you know, to Mark, like, hey, we got to get these guys out of here. They, they, they've been here for two summers and <laughs> you know, they must be somewhat interested in it. And I guess Fed, uh, Mark, uh, Mark Butmore's words were, well, if you're interested in getting them, you go recruit them. So, <laughs> so, so. That's awesome. I, I love old school coaches. I really <laughs> do. I love them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, ultimately, 
Mark did, you know, he did talk to us and, and had us, but it was, it was JD, I think, that really pushed for us because I think Mark's way was like, we don't have enough scholarship money. I can't afford these guys. Like, it's just like, well, what's the point of offering getting them anything? Uh, um, and they weren't, CU wasn't a fully funded program at the time we were being recruited either. Wow. So they, they had like, I think, I think there were about 12 or 12 and a half scholarships at the time. And they, I, I don't know what the exact number you was. had eight or nine at the time. Only a, yeah, uh, nine or ten eight. or whatever it was. Um, so it was a fully funded program. So they, he, he, I think Mark felt that it would, like, it would be an insult for us to even get offers from CU if they were going to offer us like books and you know, a bag of peanuts or something like that, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, hey, uh, books but, actually are really attractive. Okay, yeah, books well, are Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, they're not cheap. <laughs> no, they're not. But, uh, but you know, kudos to JD got us out there and it, it worked out and uh everything that that they presented to us was everything we wanted um and you know I, if i had to do it all over again i'd be there a thousand times over again so um i but, just love how like there was this rivalry between brothers but the whole time it was we are going together as as one package like Exactly. No matter how much, you know, that you guys might have fought, or, or, you know, as brothers, but hey, we are a team till the end. That is phenomenal. I yeah. love that. I mean, I mean, the uh, whole point was like when we got to middle school and Fed had not won a state championship for a team on the men's side. And Jorge and I brought that state championship to the, um, to the, to the middle school level. Same thing. Go back forward to high school. We did the exact same thing. Wheeling High School had one on the men's side. Um, they won a lot of women's side, a lot on the women's side. Jordan and I brought the state championship. Um, beat the uh, York High School out of their, out of their usual powerhouses uh, from Illinois. Um, Joe Newton and his crew, you know. Um, I, had to, I had to drop that name because it's you got to give props to a guy who made Illinois running, Joe Newton, you know. Yeah. Um, and then you have, uh, and then we go, then we're going to college, and when Jordan and I were like, you know, we just, let's just keep it rolling here. Let's let's get let's get a national title over here at the uh, at the uh, at the uh, college level, and you know that's we did. Um, I think that was one thing that was attractive was that Colorado didn't have a title, and we wanted to, yeah. we wanted to you know bring home that title for them. And uh, as as uh, uh, as Eduardo and I, we, we I think that's one of the best accomplishments. So we uh, you know we we were, we teamed up together as a team, and we we did exactly what we set out to do. I so, love that supreme confidence. I really love that yeah. supreme confidence between the two of you that if we're together, we're going to deliver. That's freaking awesome. So <laughs> you guys had the same coach for middle school and high school? So uh, so he was our, our club coach at high school. Gotcha. We, uh, okay. Mark Saylor was our, our high school coach. But, uh, you know, all kinds of purposes, year-round training, gotcha. we had fed as there. And uh, we had a good, strong group of guys that would train, train with us throughout the whole summer summers or winters, whatever it was, when there was in between seasons. Um, you know, it's, it, it, here's how it was in high school. We used to, we used to do workouts before dual meets because Fez like, you, these, these dual meets are nothing for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you're that good. <laughs> so so we, we'll wake up at five in the morning, go work out with Fed in the morning and then go show up to the dual meet and just like, just kind of like, uh, just run with the guys, just kind of push them and, you know, right. get them, try to get them along. Did you guys rock, paper, scissors over who gets to win that race that, that time? I never, I never took a win unless I earned it. That's uh, all. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, how, many, how many did you, how many of those did you earn actually? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Like, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love the uh, brotherly ribbing that is going on here. It is so amazing. I do want to jump into this because, you know, obviously you guys have a ton of successes running, right? But anyone that's been a runner for a long time knows there's a lot of downs that comes with running too. It's not all great. You know, what was it like going through that with each other, going through the successes, being there with each other when you guys did fall short of your goals and how much was having each other do it through the whole time through, you know, junior high, high school, college. And I'd imagine you guys still stayed close when you guys were going through your pro careers and probably still trained together. I'd imagine like, what was it like having someone there all the time, whether you hated them at that moment or still, or loved them, like, what was that like being able to go through that with somebody? Were you guys hard on each other? Were you guys picking, pick each other up? What was that like? Jorge, you could start on this one. Well, you know, let's start off this way. Eduardo is my best friend. happens to be my brother as well. So it's like the coolest thing in the world. Best thing you could possibly do. I live with the guy for so many years and our wives would probably kind of 
to not like that fact that we were that close to each other because you know we're, we've been close but we finally since been married long enough that i think you know it's the piece of the dust has settled but uh <laughs> but the wife's uh, are like all right guys yep <laughs> exactly. in boston i still live in colorado there's enough there's enough mileage in between us <laughs> exactly. exactly so but uh but to, uh going back to like the ups and downs and, and train together and and lifting ourselves and sometimes having downs um you know the 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 coolest thing for us is that we're twins and there's a connection there that you just can't explain whether we were runners or just regular human beings just going about life. But twins have a special connection and that, that is true. Um, absolutely hundred percent true. And, and, uh, you know, his, his pains are my pains and, and, um, and his successes are my successes because I just, you know, whenever, whenever uh, we do something and he did, a, he had a great workout, I'd be, you know, I just like, I'd be pumped from just as much as if I were pumped from my workout. So, uh, and, and it, I was always, I felt like he was always there for me as, as I was always there for him. So throughout, throughout college, throughout junior high, throughout high school and college, um, and the professional, we, uh, I think I could honestly say that we had each other's back and, and it was not just us. Um, uh, you know, the, we were surrounded by really good people. Uh, Steve Slattery is always there. Um, you know, I got even Sarah Slattery, who, you know, I'm glad they married each other because they're like two of my best friends and they're married together. So when we go see each other, like we go hang out, like I have two friends that are, I get to really hang out with. So it's wonderful pretty- podcast guests too. They were yeah. Yeah, both of them are awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, yeah. It's like, it, 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 like, and I think that's what's kind of special about why and I being so close together and helping each other that I think we, in my mind, I feel like we were able to like, take that aura and invite other good people to be around us and, and, and just, just live that. Um, and, 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 and continue to grow. It's not just from our orbit, but other orbits as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I just feel that, that it's, uh, it, it was special and, and we still, to this day, I, I, I'm there for Eduardo hundred percent of the time and, and whether it's good or bad, you know, I've, I've, I'm there for him. So, and I, and I, and I, I can feel, I feel comfortable knowing that he's going to be there for me no matter what. Ed, you want to piggyback on that? Yeah, well, I'll I'll tell you uh, a one sp- specific memory. I remember, um, obviously, the one thing I'm missing in my uh, resume is the Olympic team, and uh, but it didn't bother me because let's let's go back to when Fed was coaching us in middle school, and Jorge was showing success already, and I'm starting to move up and start to show that I'm pre- I'm going to be as good as Jorge or you know, just moving up there and uh, eighth grade year comes around and Fed has a sit down and um, has right goals for that year going into eighth grade. And I remember Jorge and I were like, yeah, we want to be state champions as a team. We want to go one, two, we want the conference. And we showed it to him and he looked at the, and he's like, not good enough. Go back to the drawing board. He made us <laughs> sit down again, write more goals. So then we're like, we would start talking about, all right, let's talk about high school get to high school, win state championships, win whatever, run fast times, blah, blah, blah. Looks at it, not good enough. And then he's like, he's like, that's what I, I think you first mentioned, full locker. And then he's like, there's other things you got to look at, at college, stuff like that. So we go in there right down to stuff like that. Finally, like after a third time, he shows up like, all right, guys, enough of this. Like what I want you guys to do and think about is Olympic Games. You guys are gonna make the Olymp- one, you guys are gonna make the Olympic team. That's what he, that's the goal he was looking for. That's that's the part he was opening up the, the like our our vision to bigger things. And when Jorge made it to Beijing in 2000, 2008, um, it was my wife Linda fed my parents walking into the nest the stadium, and um, my parents were like just a little bit ahead of us and. It was me and Fed, and my wife was with my parents, and it was me and Fed um, walking back. And I remember stopping, and I'm like, hey, hey Fed, let's, I'm going to stop here. Let's, I'm going to look at this stadium. And I'm like, you did this to us. And at that moment, I felt like it was not Jorge, just Jorge and the t- making that, running that track. Like, I, I felt like I was running the r- race too. And Fed and I both like looked at each other and were like, yeah, we, we got it. We did it. And we hugged each other, and I was like, if that wasn't a hugger, we hugged each other that time, and we're like, we did it. We were, we were excited. We were pumped. 
And that's awesome because that's like the one big race that you decided to go to, right? You're like, I'm going to the Olympics with my brother. Like, yeah, I, I was like, I'm like, I don't know if I can, I can't miss Jorge running the Olympics. I, I know I want to make my own team, but I can't miss this either. Jorge excused all the others. He might be pissed at me for this one. Like, <laughs> this one I kind of got to go to. So, it's so, the Olympics. I'm there. There's a story to that too. Um, so after, um, after my season was over in track, and I know George was like really contention to make that team uh, in the springtime. I pretty much became a guinea pig for him. I was, I was doing all the intervals with him and just pushing him as hard as I can. And I'll rest on one or two of them and then go back out there and run hard and push them. And um, I remember he had to do like a like a, a coach Jones, Steve Jones, wanted him to do a fast mile after a couple of repeats, and he needed to break four minutes in a mile up in elevation at Fairview High School. And I took him to three quarters of the way, and I just, I just hit fifty nine point nine, fifty nine point nine. 59.9. And then I, I, I was like, oh, you're on your own at this point. <laughs> and I, I, I was cashed. But after that workout and um, after Jorge made that team, uh, Jorge told me, he's like, pack your bags. We're going to Beijing. I'm paying for you to go out there. So George, George uh, paid for my ticket to get out there. Didn't even give you the opportunity to say no this time. He's like, your ass is coming with me. He's going. <laughs> we did it together. We earned that- it together. So. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. And the thing is, like, that's so cool, too, because we've had a few pros on here and a few Olympians, and they all talk about kind of the loneliness of being in the pro circuit. Like, in a way, like, you're now on your own. You're doing everything on your own. You have to find your own coach. If you're lucky enough to have a training team, that's great. And it's like, you guys have at least a built-in duo. And the fact that you guys are, like, extremely close in talent level and speed in a lot of ways definitely helps. And it's just cool. And I wish more twins were as good as you guys. So we wouldn't have as many pros scrounging for freaking running teams. But, um, you know, that's just, it. that's an amazing story. And just, well, it's, really, really you know, really cool. it's, it's great. And, you know, one thing that, we, you know, we can segue into this next subject is that, um, you know, I think the fact that there are teams out there working together now, it's professional world. It's really has helped a lot of these professionals, you know, be able to like have like a core of, you know, where to meet, who to meet and, and work together. And, and, um, you're seeing all these fast times and, you know, there's more to it than just that. But I mean, these, yeah. these, uh, athletes having the opportunity to train together is, is, it's really cool. And, yeah. um, Edward and I kind of had that, uh, in Boulder, but it was still like, it was kind of like, you never had one coach. Like it was like, always like trying to find out who's going to be your professional coach. And I remember leaving and, and I remember leaving to see you, and Coach Wetmore was like, you know, I'll help you out. But it was like never like 400% commitments. So and then I had to like, all right, this is not going to work out. You know, jumped around. Finally, I said it was Steve Jones. And Steve Jones is, if you guys, those young people out there that don't know who Steve Jones, he's a legend. Um, and if, uh, Steve Jones has held a world, rec- world record in the marathon. Um, oh, yeah. I think he held, he, he ran, I think, almost a world record at, at the half marathon, running through the for a world record in the marathon at the time in Chicago. And the guy was just a legend. And he was, he was at the same time, he was still in a full-time job, but he was doing all this. So it's, uh, so the guy, you know, uh, I, I was always lucky enough to land on, on my feet with like really good people. Uh, but now you can see that, you know, Dathan's got his own group out there with on. Oh, oh my God. What Dathan's doing right now for American running is it's amazing. incredible. Yeah. And then, and then there's like, you know, Jerry Schumacher, he had this yeah. thing go out and, you know, it just, it's, it just really, to me, that is the one reason I feel that American distance running is really taking off right now. Yeah. Um, other, other factors, but that's one of the major reasons. And yeah. it's really cool to see. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that, you know, that some people can find a home and actually get the best out of themselves by working together. And one thing that I'm actually happy about, because after obviously with the Alberto Salazar stuff, like there was a scar, right? With American distance running because he he was producing the best at that time. And then that all went down. And it's really cool how quickly, you know, Dathan has kind of filled that void and is starting to produce just so many incredible distance runners. And it's really, and I remember talking to Dave because me and Dave were the only two people that wanted to talk track to each other for the longest time. (laughs) because nobody wants to and that's why we started this damn show um but it was like we were trying to figure out okay like where do we go from here is there going to be a void are we going to see a slip and then like and like you said there's so many other teams but what Dathan's doing there is like really pushing the level of american distance running it's so cool to see and 
I love it. So I want to ask you guys. Oh, Dave, go ahead. You have something. No, I, I just wanted to uh, to bring it back for a second because, like, um, we've had on some high school runners, and everyone's main goal is the Foot Locker meet. So, what is it like to run in that meet? And the fact that you guys are still such huge ambassadors, you know, with Jorge now being named the, the meet director in the whole northeast part of it. Like, what does that meet mean to you guys? And how much do you think that 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 meet will just keep growing? And by the way, thank you for bringing it back to being called Foot Locker. Like yes. that is what it's been called. <laughs> That's what it's always been. Thank you, oh, well, I, I, I thank you Hoka, for, for for you know for for uh, making this th- this whole thing happen. But uh, I mean, we can start you with, with you, Jorge. Like, what's like to be now the meet director? <laughs> And it's now moving from New York to Boston, but to be the meet director of the meet and you guys, I remember last year, you, Steve, Sarah, um, just being the team captains for the meet. Like, what does that meet mean to, to you guys? And, and how important is that to to keep it going and to make that such a vital part of what high school runners can actually do? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, uh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's exciting time for me. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, for me, Full Locker has always been special has a special place in my, in my heart and in, in my story of, of running um, from my freshman year qualifying, not knowing what the race was to all of a sudden qualifying the next three following three years and winning a time qualifier. That's insane. Ultimately winning my senior year. Um, but also getting to share that experience with Eduardo, um, you know, another great experience of going me getting there first and him rubbing it in his face and then joining us <laughs> like three years. Uh, but, um, but then I, you know, ultimately also meeting great people at the same time. Like I, Steve Slattery, one of my best friends is, uh, you know, we met there. Well, actually we met before that. But we met when we were in, believe it or not, we met in Providence, Rhode Island, the USA TF Junior Olympics first before we, met, <laughs> before we met at Full Locker. But, but we rekindled the friendship and, and ultimately ended up at the same university. But Full Locker is one of those things that I think it's iconic. Um, it's, it's, it's the title that um, I know there's NXN out there and they, they, it's got, it, NXN has a place in it, but it's, it's not full locker. So uh, the individual title that you want to win and you want to be a part of because it's the history behind it, not just all the names that have come behind it. Um, and I, I'm just fortunate enough to be one of those names that happened to win it in one of my, one of my years, but uh I'm glad that Full Locker is still around. I'm glad that people still see it as one of the premier meets, and I hope to see it, and I'm part of it now as the meet director for the Northeast, and I hope to see it live for many more generations beyond me so that they could all ultimately look at the list of names that came before them and say, I'm on that list, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, so, you know, it, it, what came about, I – Thanks to Full Locker and, and Hoka being taking a three year deal with with the whole, with Full Locker to to continue this um, and supporting this event. Um, you know, and I, I have to say, I have to bring up the, the name of somebody who was the, the heart and soul of this sport of this event for the longest time and just has recently le- uh, left the organization is Janine Zox. Uh, she's the she was the brains behind the operation for a long time and um, I was there from the the time I was a freshman walking in to Del Coronado and she was there smiling and welcoming me because I was a young freshman um, to, to when I was, you know, now a professional talking as a, as a guest and Janine having the same smile that I remember when I first walked in as a freshman. So, you know, I give her a lot of credit for keeping this going on. The torch has now been passed. And, and for me personally, I felt like I needed to invest some time to, to this event and give back with my knowledge and my experience and, and share uh, what I can so that I could continue um, this meet to, to grow and become a better event. And, uh, and I'm bringing it from, um, you know, I know there's probably not, not a popular move, but I, I took it from Van Cortland and I brought it up to Boston. Um, you New Jersey good boys are probably ready to throw me, throw a Listen, it's not the same yeah. Vanny that it used to be. It's not the Vanny that, you know, you guys possibly, you know, I don't know if you guys ever competed at Van Cortland. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. not that same Vanny that it used to be. They've made a lot of changes, a lot of construction. It should have been brought to Homedale, but I'm, um, you know, that's another, that's yeah. another thing there. Homedale Park, the toughest course in the country. Voted no, this year, no, but, you know, Max says 
yeah. But, uh, you know, it, for it, for many for numerous reasons, I mean, I call Boston home um, yeah. so now. So it's uh, it's one of those things that uh, I, I felt like I living in the area. I want to support the running community here, and it's, there's a you know there's a strong tradition of running community up here. Hey, listen, that indoor facility they just built, along with BU and the Magic Carpet, they have two of the most premier indoor facilities. Right. right. I'm okay with you guys giving them a big XC race. They deserve it. They're working hard out there. Yeah, so we're uh, so yeah, so I'm 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 glad to bring it up in this area. Uh, we, you know, I, I wish I could give you right now the with confirmation where the event's going to be. I mean, you guys could all kind of guess where we're kind of going, uh, but it's uh, but it's not confirmed, and we're, I'm working hard to because this was such a last minute pull, and uh, <laughs> and I'm and I'm doing my best to. Uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen somewhere in the Boston area. I just want I have a vision of where I want it to happen. And and so it's confirmed I can't I can't I can't confirm the, the site yet. But uh but it's exciting stuff and you know, for me, four years of partaking this as, as a high schooler and coming back every year and, and talking to the kids, um and you know, watching the new generations come over the years. Uh, it is still the premier meet of watching the young young women and young men um you know continue on to be become stars. And that's just the beginning, for lack of the beginning of it. When you confirm it, let us know because we'll give it a shout out on the very next show so that people can know where to go when they want to go and watch it. And Thank you. I appreciate that, Alex. So we'll right. do that. That, so, Ed, yeah, go for what Ed, Ed, you now. You yep. know, like I, I say, well, one, congratulations, George, for being the regional director. I mean, um, we had we we had an honor to go from, come from the Midwest with Peter Hink is supposed to be director. And um, he definitely bowled us and showed us. You know, beyond running, um, he's a good mentor as well for us. Uh, besides just making the full locker and being there as a regional coach, but um, this full locker thing is like a—it's a fraternity. It's a—it's—it's it's a family. Once you make it, you're—you're you're part of something for the rest of your life. Uh, one, make it once, or make it several times. And uh, fortunately, Jorge and I have—you know—where we had seven opportunities between all of us together seven times. We were there, um, and we were. Uh, you know, it's it's a great honor, and like Janine Zox welcomed us and made us a part of the family, and continue bringing us back. And we were honored to do that because we want to make sure the generations continue going and learning how to get there. And you don't have to be a winner like Jorge. I was never a winner, but I was still able to succeed uh, beyond high school and college, and you know, go uh, like a professional. A pretend professional, I call myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, but, uh, pro, buddy. It, but it's uh, it's one of those things. Like we've, uh, it's definitely a, it was a big step for us to open up our eyes to, you know, had the opportunity to compete with us the best, um, and I truly enjoyed it. And if you know how Jorge just said right now, like he got he got this thrown at this thing thrown at him last second. And if you know us at the Fight Club, the guys who know us at the Fight Club, the people who know us, if it's one, if you can have kind of one, you know, somebody to do something at the last second, kind of enough to do it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the cool thing about Foot Lockers, too, is like you guys, obviously, you know, Jorge four times, Ed three times, even if you go once. Your name is now out there. Going to Foot Lockers, people, you know, in the running community, colleges, they take notice. To get there multiple times, it certainly helped your prospects on going to a big 30, time college. It's massive. 32 people go. Yeah. Every year. It's like special. 32, I mean, think about how many people run cross country every year. Well, it's, it's Dave, it's, it, it, they, 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 you're aging yourself again. You know, it's 32 back when we were there. Now, oh, it's, 40. now it's 40. <laughs> but, but except for that, during that sorry. era, my Ten senior now. year. 10 now, right? <laughs> so my senior year, Ten, there's I'm a story sorry. about my senior year. I'm sorry. Um, at regionals, there was a close tie. I almost didn't make it my senior year. Coming into the last stretch, me and a guy from Minnesota, I can't think of his name, we came in and crossed the finish line at the exact same time. And I don't know if Peter helped me out. I'm not going to say he did or not. I don't know, but we ended up going 33 that year. He brought, oh, he brought an extra person. One extra. There you yeah. Go. So like it was like it was one of those things like I think Peter had had to make the call and he called Janine Zox. Like, I can't, I can't make a separation between these two. He's like, bring them both along. So we brought 33 that year. So that's that's what, probably some clout to being a two-time guy There was no guy photo going already. timing, then. You know, the, the, no. There was no photograph. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I'll be remiss not to bring this up. So one of the times that Eduardo did earn the stripes of, of coming in front of me and I saw his backside, which is not that great, was my, <laughs> so, which was my, my, uh, was my sophomore year of full locker regionals. And I, 
I made it the year my freshman year, and I remember just being I was like in second or third or behind Gabe Jennings, and just the last like four hundred meters, I just I just something just was not hitting right, and I was falling back, and all of a sudden I hear footsteps coming from behind me, and I'm like, oh, I, I I I I know that 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 temple, I know <laughs> that, that I know that running form, <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, uh, and sure enough, he passes me, so. Ed, that's one of the times. Just a, it's still fresh in my memory. <laughs> Ed didn't want to bring it up, so I'm happy you did. But he was definitely thinking about it. <laughs> exactly. exactly, exactly. So I want to jump in to our last thing because you guys are obviously, you know, very successful racers in the sport. Um, and me and Dave often talk about this because right now we're seeing a lot more rabbiting, I think, than we've ever seen before and you know one of our former guests who we were honored to have on eric sawinski is the one arguably the greatest rabbit of all time right now yeah. um and Very just pacer, doing yeah. amazing things best pacer but i want to ask your guys opinion and ed i want to start with you have we kind of lost the tactics of racing in the sport right now where everyone's just trying to get these rabbits out there you know breaking four is almost a joke right now I'm like it, like everybody is breaking four minutes and you could break four right now if you just came out to the magic carpet out here exactly exactly but like breaking about that the carpet's ridiculous right because every year you go to the magic carpet for the valentine and boom you break four automatically right that's how five people and broke then, it in one and then race. the terrier a few weeks later more another thirty thousand people broke it yeah. like, like, Oprah Winfrey st- show. you get a car you get a car you, <laughs> you sub four you sub four you're all sub four but um so are you seeing a shift in where it's more important to time trial? And are we kind of losing the, you know, the aspect of racing and just um, putting a hard race? Honestly, it's like, well, let's just put it this way. It's it's a revolving sport and it's always something gets revolved and it's coming, you know, look at basketball. Like it used to be all down below in the paint and, you know, yeah. like the mid jumper. Now it's like, you got to shoot from half court and you got to be making those threes like all the time. Right. Um, um, it's just the exact same thing with track right now. It's like the, it's, it's all about fast. You want to see fast times. And, uh, and that's what we're looking at now. We're just, um, it's not about racing against each other. It's not the rivalry. It's how fast can you get out there? And that's, that's, that's a rivalry rate at the time. It's, I mean, look at 211 for the women's marathon. You gotta be kidding. Insanity. Insanity. I, I, I woke up. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, uh, she would have kicked my butt pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you brought that up. I, I, I feel bad. That is just insanity. That's and, crazy. And, and, you know, it's an amazing feat. I just say, no matter how you cut it, whether it's shoes or whatever, it's an amazing feat. And, you know, good for her. I mean, that's just, uh, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I also want to bring up too, because then we see these championship races. And obviously, Jakob Ingerbritsen is a big one with Kerr passing him at the end of the 15 there. Yeah. And it's like, does that come with, because obviously, again, he's done some, he did some amazing things. He came close to breaking the mile record over, you know, in uh, Eugene. So it's not like he was on dead legs. But did all this time trialing, you think potentially hurt him for racing there? I, I think those, those, that, when you get into a racing, a, a true gr- a grinding race like that, Championship race. If you're a championship racer, way, you, way different. It's a different, it's a different animal. Um, I, I mean, I can tell you right now, like, uh, I, I can give you an example of the C- CU versus CSU rivalry for football. It's a rivalry game, right? They expected a three touchdown lead for the CU game against over CSU, but it's a rivalry game. You never know what you're going to get when you get into championships like that. Like, it's, <laughs> it's going to be head on, but whoever's who can hit the hardest or run the fastest. At the end, is digging deep. That's what racing is about, and and there's not that much of that going on anymore. Um, but you do see it sometimes in these championship races. Where you know, we talked we talked about earlier about the grind, right? About grinding it out, like having coaches test you and, and make sure that you're 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 you know you're not a polished machine, but you're like you're willing to you're willing to get out there in the dirt and get get dirty and get the things get the job done. And I would say. You know, Jeff Whiteman a year ago won the world championships. Yeah. He was a grinder. He, um, you know, I, 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 um, he's one of those guys that you just see him. You're like, you can tell that he's out there. His back of his mind, he's got, the, he's like, he's like Rocky Balboa. Like, you know, he's got the poster up there, like doing sit ups, push ups. You know, what about those Brits? Those Brits are just all <laughs> grit when it comes to the, you know, the champion yeah, carries. Yeah. If there's exactly. a point in the finals, there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's he's out there like he's got he's got he's got the vision. He's going to win this thing, and, and it doesn't matter who it is up front. It could be Ikabal Garouche. He's going to go out there and beat him, and that's 
that's what it takes to win a championship. You need to be able to grind it out. And no matter what the situation is, whether it's a fast race or a slow race, you got to be in there and give yourself a chance. And, you know, Jakob, I'm, you know, he's going to be a successful runner no matter what. I'm sure he's going to have his his glory of winning championships, more championships down the road. But but um, there's always going to be that one guy that's going to want to be just a, a little bit hungrier. And if you catch him at the wrong time, he's going to he's going to beat you. And uh, and that's what's beautiful about championship racing. I, I am not a fan of the fast times, like just like gunning out for pacing. We're talking about just running fast times. I, I think it's great that we could do it as, a, as, as human beings. Um, I think a lot has changed. You know, we can talk about shoe technology and all yeah, that. If you want to talk about the tech, go get into it. What do you think about super um, shoes? What do you think about Strava and all the things that are going on right now? <clears throat> so there's, there's like all technology, like, again, we have to evolve with the sport, right? Like no, but we have to be realistic about what it means. Like, you know, we're, we're comparing sports. Like if you say golf, you know, before the, the, the modern golf ball, people could not hit the ball far. Also, I'm like, you know, now I'm, I'm driving all these old guys. Jack Nicholas, like, there's no way I was better than that guy. Like, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, it just, it just, technology has changed. And, and we have come in the running world where technology has changed. Yes, the tracks went from, you know, being cinder or whatever. Cinder, it's now. synthetic now. And it's, 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 it's oh, no. now we're uh, made another jump. And, and, and this jump is now has really just erased. I think just the, the record boards of what it used to be. And, and we have to accept that as, as, as a community that, you know, maybe the times that like Frank Shorter was running or Steve Prefontaine were running, you know, still have a place on this, in the sport, but it's just, there's no longer, you can't compare them with Steve Prefontaine and the guy who ran in the nineties to the guy who's running now in, in, the, in 2024 with the new speed technology. So do you guys sit back and think every once in a while, like, man, I wish I had those super shoes while I was in Colorado or like, I wish I like, what could I have run if I had these spikes? Like, do you guys sit back and think every once in a while, like, man, I honestly, I honestly, I don't, I don't like, <laughs> because, because I don't, I, I mean, I, as much as I love the sport and I, and I put my mm. time and I, and I enjoyed every minute of it, it is a grind. And for me to think about going back there and grinding it out again, <laughs> on a pair of shoes, right. and, you know, it's far fetched, but if you were to call me in, in the beginning of my, life, my career, I'd love to see what I could. I mean, nobody, nobody wants I would to be, wish I could have uh, opportunities to actually like train somebody's shoes. Cause I know it power to get me healthier. Yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. the return and stuff Absolutely. like that. That would have been a yeah, great. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I remember running, I think, Nike Pegasus or something like that. It was uh, some, the Zoom some Pegasus. Shoe, I'm like, I don't know how the heck I survive in those shoes. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> no, the, the, I'll right. tell you what. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I do appreciate the sponsorship I had with Reebok for the longest time. I was, I was a Reebok athlete for my whole career. Uh, Eduardo was as well. Um, you know, but I've got to say. Uh, <laughs> The, the technology we were running in compared to this now, I might as well have been running in sandals. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, right. But but you also don't want to be like like the old bitter guy, like, ah, uh, if I had this technology when yeah. I was young, you know? Oh, yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, no, <laughs> you, all, okay, be, uh, we, we, I want to run that. I'm uh, okay with I it. I want to run a 344 if I, you know, like, so. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. When, here's the thing for me and you as slow guys, we could certainly be bitter, okay? If oh, we yes. Had yeah, great we could be. Yes, we could yes. be. We These two over here that have actual accomplishments, maybe they don't need it. Because... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it, uh, but it, again, it, like what I like to, th for me, the most exciting part of this sport is when you see championship racing. Yeah, yeah. I love seeing the Olympics. Absolutely. I love seeing the world, the world championships. Um, whether it's there is know, no track or cross country, it's just it's pure racing. Look at Matt Centrowitz. Probably yeah. one of the probably like the slowest 1500 meter championship time ever, but man, he's an Olympic champion. They exactly. let him do it. He ran the, the best race machine. and he yeah. won. And you know, yeah. it, it was a pretty pedestrian time by, uh, you know, world standards, but man, I don't care how slow I, you always going to take If I ran eight minutes to win the, a gold medal, I don't care what I walk <laughs> away. Absolutely. Happy. Hell yeah. He will down the sidewalk. Champion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So before we close out, we're going to ask you two the same question that we ask everybody to end this out. Now, obviously, you know, you guys were both pro runners and we know one thing about pro runners. They all have to get jobs afterwards and even during, right? Because pro running is not a lucrative thing. Yeah. So, I think the latter is probably the most accurate. <laughs> even yes. <during. laughs> yeah. So Ed, I'm actually going to start with you here. If you had a crystal ball, if you had a magic ball and you could do anything to change this sport, 
to make it a more fan friendly sport, a more lucrative sport for the pros and lucrative overall, what would be a change that you would make? Uh, I think the biggest thing right now is, um, unfortunately, I don't want to take anything away from Eugene, Oregon, because it's, you know, it's a Thank great. You. Go ahead. Say it. We all, we all. Great, a great location. Of, preach, I mean, brother. Preach. <laughs> it's a great place to host, uh, to like, you know, every once in a while to host a championship. But to have it all the time there, making it impossible for many spectators to actually go watch that race. And just just knowing, like, if you say Eugene, Oregon, to 90% of the population, you're like, uh, what's up there? We don't know what's up there. We don't yeah. care what's It's cold. There. It's Britain. It's England of our, of the United States. It's always yeah. raining. <laughs> um, so, like, we're never we're, we're just never going to be able to grow the sport unless we actually expose it. And a, and a big scene like Olympic trials and new locations and – and push for that to happen, um, and like and and rally beyond that. Whatever well, city or town that wants to host it, help them host it. Rally behind them because, like, ultimately, right now, I don't want to say the leadership at uh, USA Track and Field, but they have ties to up there, and they, they feel oh, yeah. obligated to do it. Yep. And I, and unfortunately, our sport's not going to grow because that's just narrow-minded thinking. There's 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 just a situation where people just want to just make it easier like oh it's, it's the, the by default we're just gonna keep, put it up there and i mean i said i don't want to take it for gene because i haven't been up to a new stadium yet i i want to go check it out oh, it's gorgeous it's but, gorgeous but i can imagine how i mean i've seen it on tv and stuff but um i also i, I mean I'm, a, I'm like an old school kind of guy i love wrigley field i don't need a nice baseball stadium to say this is a great venue because i love the way eugene used to be too as well the old stadium that was mm-hmm. spectacular but you're also you're telling me there aren't some SEC schools that are huge track and field schools like your Arkansas, your LSU, your Florida State. You're telling me they wouldn't love to host it. You're telling me Michigan, which is, produces a ton of you know good runners and some Big Ten schools, wouldn't love to host it. Colorado has a fantastic. Yeah. You know, there's there's a ton of if you're looking at colleges, but, there's a ton you, of colleges but, that would take and, that and, on. And college is a great place to host it, and I think Ed hit the nail on the head. Uh, the it, it, it the love needs to be spread out so that. You know, a kid from down the street here where I live could go and see an Olympic trials and get inspired to be an Olympian or um, whatever the case may be. But you said colleges, but I I would say put it more into a bigger city. Absolutely. Icon. Icon Stadium right in New York. It might be a nightmare to get to, but it is the track and field facility first. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So go to Icon Stadium. Make that place rock. Absolutely. Um, Every, every, and, you know, they go to, Midwest, go to a city like Chicago. Find a place where you can build a stadium and like make it a, a, a Chicago municipal uh, track for most of the time. Maybe host an NCAA championship there once yeah. in a while. And then also ultimately bring home the, champ- the Olympic trials like every third trials or whatever it may be, uh, or the U.S. championships. Just so you, that- can, you can have the NACAC there. You can have the Pan Am games there. You can have so many games at exactly. track but only facilities. Track Track is not going to grow it. unless you unless you you spread it around so that people it's convenient for people to go see. A guy from a guy from Maine is never going to go to Eugene, Oregon, to go watch right. unless he's a diehard. You know, a dude from Jersey and New York is not going to go out there unless I have a reason to be out there. Unless I'm the an athlete att- out there. Look at the attendance from the Diamond League this. Yeah, past right. week. Like look, look at the stadiums. stadiums that that never happens to Diamond League because it's expensive. They don't have hotels like. We yeah. need more track and field facilities here in this country for outdoor track. We have plenty for indoor. There's nothing really except for Eugene well, for well, an outdoor stadium. Which Boston? I mean, I'm going to throw a plug here for Boston. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We have we we there's Franklin Park when they hosted the you know, the World Championships '92 for cross, but there's a stadium called White Stadium, which is about to become the home for a women's soccer league. But at the same time, there's a plan to host to build a track there. Nice. So we're we are crossing our fingers with the leadership here in Boston that maybe they they build a facility that doesn't have to be Diamond League certified. No, okay. I hope that's even the, if that's it's con- even if it can be continental, even if it could be a lower. It doesn't have yeah. to be a platinum, uh, you know, venue. Even if yeah. we could start getting some gold and silver venues, exactly, would bring fans into it. Absolutely, and that and you know that's that's so you know you answer your question. It's uh, the sport needs to be marketed so that the average person could enjoy it um, yeah. and does not spend an arm and a leg and fly from from uh, wherever they are to a connecting flight to Eugene, Oregon, 
and then spend an arm and a leg staying in a no-tell motel. You know, just, it's- so, here's, so here's something for you guys, and I've said it on the show before. Here's one thing we all know. Distance runners, there's a ton of nerds in distance running, right? A lot of us are actual, they're going to get real majors. It's not like some of the other sports. That's like, I'm going to be a business major. No, I'm going to go pro. So they're like, in track and field, you have a lot of that. There's a lot of guys, young ladies that make good money. They're successful. Where the hell are they in trying to, and where is their vision? Because track running is the most participated sport on the planet bar none there isn't a question uh, it's bigger than soccer it's bigger than all that where, are they? where is the vision where is yeah. the vision for these uh, for these people going if we can pool our money and make this a successful sport we're this is going to be the most successful thing of all time because it can be it really can be if marketed properly yeah i mean you look at the olympics every four years you know the most watched uh sport is track and field absolutely you know, so it, not even close so uh, to us, I think, I mean, in, in my humble opinion, it starts at the top with the leadership. So, and I think that's where we're, we're, we're lacking. Uh, we need, we need strong leadership at the top. And I, I don't want to call any certain names, but it's just, that's where it starts. If you can't, um, if you can't get her, get her, the community together to support, especially your top earners or top people who are fairly successful in the business world that were connected to the world of sport, of track mm-hmm. and field. There's a there's a problem there, and I think I think that there's a there's a short sighted vision by the leadership, and they they just are they're dropping the ball there. And that's so, also that's what do you think like of guaranteed um, money and like things for, for like like a like a pro circuit here in the, in the states? That's I was like, gonna say like a promotion thing where yeah. like like we're gonna get these athletes at these meets, and you know like but also like the athletes have to show up and participate more and not- well, that's exactly right i mean i i, I was uh, i was at a meet in the spring out on california i'm not gonna say the meet but it's a. Uh, I was out there and it was poorly attended and, you know you could talk about the la grand prix <laughs> <laughs> you could talk about it here we all know okay yeah. we I mean, all it, was know. Like, it was like it was like it was like cricket right <laughs> like um you know the, the uh that right there is the issue right there is that, yeah, we went to a bigger city, but uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm in the sports world now and I'm, and I, I work for a company called global FX and marketing and we, we represent, we represent athletes and, uh, and we put on events as well. And um, I say the most successful events we've had uh, Nikon stadium is because we went out there knocking at people's doors to fill in the seats marketing and, marketing and you marketing. See, one of the things i have a problem with is usatf the governing body also being the full-on sanctioning body and the promotion of these meets right because then they get to control a ton of it the reason why boxing is at success usc has had success is because they're the promoters and then they go to these sanctioning bodies in order to figure things out right, right. boxing has to go through nevada with the fight things and ufc why can't track and field do that? ATL is trying to do something, but ATL is very, you know, they're trying, I guess. And that's yeah, and they're limited. And a- ATL, a- ATL is, uh, you know, you know, and I, 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 I have utmost respect for Rich Canal. He's, yeah, I applaud that. He's one of the premier. I mean, New Jersey guy, obviously. You know, yes, he, he is. Fire, we awesome. get things done in Jersey, baby. <laughs> exactly. Um, and um, I, I was fortunate enough to work with with Rich uh, for a short while uh, here in Boston, and before he went out to ATL. Uh, but uh, you know he's he's the kind of leadership we need. He's, he he brings in really good ideas and you know presses those buttons and uh, and you know there's more rich canals out there. We just need to bring them out and uh, and uh, or give people like rich canal opportunities to to continue to you know, expand these ideas. And I, I, I you want I mean you want to listen, you want to know what Rich did when he held hosted the Olympic trials in Atlanta. I mean he absolutely like. Houston blew it up, made it huge, and started advancing uh, the Olympic trials. I think Rich Canal, like, is like, oh, hold my beer. Let me let me do something better for you guys. And he did. Georgetown guy. <laughs> yeah, Georgetown guy, yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. I think that all these ideas, and that's part of the uh, goal of this show is to get these ideas out there and to make them, and hopefully it reaches somebody's ears, right? And, you know, right. because we're just hoping it reaches the right ears and having, you know, prominent people in the sport like you guys on this show is oh, something you. that is going to help to push us along. And, you know, I, I appreciate both of your candor and being very open and honest about, because I think all of us that care about the sport, you know, 
obviously, you know, me and Dave are pros. You guys are done with your pro career. But man, there's some amazing pros out there that absolutely deserve to never have to work again. That should just quite literally, they should be pro runners and they should be millionaires and they should never have to work again. And it's yeah, but, but you, need, you need to you get know. back. You need to get yeah. back. I, I, I'm about to talk. I was one. I want back to talking to novels. <laughs> yeah, I want to put that in right now. Like, so when I got done with running and I became a uh, USA track and field long distance running chairman yep. for a couple of years, um, I think we need more people to do that, to volunteer and put that effort back in there. And I was, I went in there with wanting to make the sport better, leaving the sport better and, and making, you know, opening doors for everybody else behind me. And it takes, it takes, it's, it's a, it's a, it's just a volunteer work, but you need to put the time in every athlete out there who has benefited from running or done, you know, has enjoyed running needs to go in there. And just, I mean, USA track and field needs leadership and we are, we have leaders. We just have to put the time into it. Um, and um, I, I enjoyed it. I did it for eight years. And there is a point where like, I become an old goat. I don't want to, I don't want like I, I get tuned out of things of what's going on. And it's a, it's a new, you need to bring a younger person in there to yes. take over. And I think a lot of times people overstay their welcome and you have to, you have to like mentor the young groups to take over that, your position. And I, I was lucky enough to work with Blake Baldwin, who's, you know, director over at Drake Relays, and he's always the new men's LDR chair. And, and I'm glad that I was able to give him that opportunity and he's now taking over and hopefully we can continue rolling that way with the, with the younger generations. Yeah. And you know, what is like a, a, the, pro, the problem is like there are athletes who get paid, but it's like the top, like 2%. And like uh, a lot of them, like they don't, put in the, the fight to give back for so that everybody can succeed. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't mean monetarily. I think I think ultimately it's more of like, you know, using whatever it is, whatever platform you may have to to help excel the sport. Um, and it could be it could be even in the beginning level of just coaching young kids. You know, that's that that right there is admirable in itself because you're going to create a new generation of young, young talented kids. Yep. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm actually, I coach at a, at a local high school here in my, in Boston. It's uh, and I, I, I avoided it for the longest time because I knew I would enjoy it. And, uh, um, and, and, it's uh, addicting. Actually, once you start seeing your kids success, it's is, really it's addicting. Yeah. And it's, 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 the best. it's, it's, it's great. You know, you're dealing with young people who have so much energy and, and, uh, such bright eyes and bright future ahead of them. And, and just to get them to push themselves, and and you know we we might not have the most talented kids in my in my team, but they push themselves. That's all I ask. And if they if they if I can see a little bit of improvement, that's success right there. I, they don't need to be gold medalist. That's what's beauty about the beautiful thing about our sport. Everybody could have their own goals and succeed and have a great career because they've worked themselves to whatever goal they might have set or success they might have made. Whether it was score for your team or. Or uh, or win a or or you know win the conference meet whatever it may be but to me coaching or giving back to the sport is important and that's one thing that um, I was fortunate enough to you know have a lot of opportunities in the sport in this way but when I old and retired and grouchy uh, I want to know I want to know that I've given back as much as it's given me and I think with that gentlemen this was such a fun show uh-huh. I really appreciate you both for jumping on. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, Alex. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, this is this is definitely going to go in as one of my all time favorites. I had an absolute blast laughing with you guys the whole time. It's <laughs> so much fun. So before we get out of here, um, Jorge, I'm going to give you a chance. Anything you want to give a shout out to? We obviously talked about you know becoming meat director, but anything else that you want to give a shout out, a plug to before we jump out of here? Well, I mean, the only thing I'll say is if you if you have a team and want to go on to the postseason, you know, I'd like to see you out here in Boston. Sign up for the Full Locker Northeast meet and and uh, support the uh, the event that uh, you know has you know showed so many young bright minds in in, in, in the running world. So I'd love to see you up here in Boston. Hopefully, uh, and if you're around, you see me around with a uh, running around my head cut off. Please say hello. I'd love to say hello to people. <laughs> Ed, how about you? Anything you want to give a shout out, a plug to? Uh, I'm not going to say a shout out. But I was going to leave. I'm going to leave by saying what the uh, good old Fed used to say: "Happy trails, guys." Happy trails. <laughs> like it, Dave. Anything you want to do before we jump out here? This was one of my all time favorite shows. I mean, oh, to yeah. see two brothers who obviously competed against one another for their whole lives, but were a 
package deal to college, have stayed close, have stayed humbled. It's an honor to have you guys on. I mean, I've followed you guys for ever, and it's just this has just been an absolute blast. So thank you both for agreeing to be on our little podcast, and it's just been an absolute blast. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. I want to just once again say, you know, thank you so much, uh, Ed Torres, Jorge Torres, for both jumping on. Twins that, you know, you just listen to a lot of fun, a lot of success, and obviously, you know, brothers to the core, ribbing each other, but, you know, obviously love each other, and you heard it throughout this. So it was so much fun. Um, thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, if you like what you heard, like, share, follow, subscribe, rate, five stars, Spotify, and iTunes. Spread this word of mouth. Go find us on the socials at Talking and Ovals. And... We'll be back next week with another great show, more great guests. Everybody, so long.